Sometimes when you're soldering, you just need to remove some parts. I'm going to show a few methods for removing parts that are soldered to a circuit board. For each of these methods, the part you're trying to remove will heat up, so be careful. For the first method of removing solder from the parts, I'll show you how to use the soldering wick. Sometimes it's also called solder wick, solder braid, or desoldering braid. It's basically just a braid of thin copper wires. Put the desoldering wick on the solder, then use a soldering iron to heat it up. If the solder is not soaking into the wick, use some flux. My video about using flux explains why this will help. Now when you heat the solder joint, the flux will do its thing with the solder and also soak into the wick. As a solder melt, it will follow the flux off of the parts and into the wick. Now for the next method of removing solder, I'll use a solder sucker. It has a plunger that you push down, then when you're ready for it to suck up the solder, you press the button. Heat the solder directly with the soldering iron with the tip of the solder sucker nearby. The plastic tip is heat resistant, so you can have it in direct contact with the soldering iron, and it shouldn't melt. Push down the plunger, melt the solder with your soldering iron, then with the tip of the solder sucker next to the solder joint, press the button. Sometimes it takes a few tries, but it works very well. For both of these methods of removing solder, they do not remove 100% of the solder, so the part will probably still be stuck in place. You can see here that the leads are stuck to the sides of the holes. I've found that you can use your soldering iron to heat up the leads and push them loose. This helps to finish removing the part. Here's a trick that makes it very easy to remove the part, if the leads are close enough together to do this. Instead of removing solder, add more. Add enough solder to connect both of the leads together. Now when you melt the solder, it will melt on both of the leads at the same time, and it will be easy to pull the part out. You may still need to remove some of the remaining solder from the holes, but you can use the methods that I've already described to do that. And finally, I need to discuss possible damage that could result if you're not careful. The copper pads that the parts are soldered to may peel off of the board. This can happen if too much heat is applied, if heat is applied for too long, or if the part is pulled off while the solder is still holding it. If the copper pad does come off, you can still replace the part, but you will need to compensate for the missing copper pad. If you have any tips or advice that you would like to share for desoldering and removing parts from circuit boards, please leave a comment and let us know. Thank you for watching.